Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Bumblecast Super Show. Swing your arms from side to side, knock things over, and get the whole song wrong. Yes. <laughs> Apparently I said Zooper. 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 I, I, I didn't. Hey, I, why be super when you can be Zooper? I didn't realize that, but hey, whatever. It's it's the Zooper Bumblecast Zooper show. Zooper. Makes us more legally distinct. Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Well, same as it ever was, my friend. We have questions from our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast kofi.com slash bumblecast and our youtube members they bought their priority we need to answer them right quick all right well uh, i guess we'll do it right now then i guess if we have to we'll do start super fast okie dokie we will here starting off with this one from the cartoonist who has a very sad announcement to make this is this is making me sad um this is a sad way to start but they say probably my last ever question no but can you both give us a list of your top five favorite TV theme songs? I can imagine Run With Us from the Raccoons is in there. We are free after all. Hope you both have a happy new year and all the best for 2023 to you and the listeners. Thank you, Zick Cartoonist. You, you shall be missed. You shall yes, be missed. thank you for all your support over 2022 and 2021. And I don't know how long has... Has the cartoon has been with us? Uh, it, it it has been a while. It's been quite... time runs together for me. It's not oversight on my part. It's just stupidity. <laughs> yes, I I think they were here for like most of last year at least. They've been they've been with us for a while. So thank you, the cartoonist. We salute you. Have a happy twenty twenty three and yes. beyond. Yes. All right. Well, uh, hey Ian, do you want to do your list first, or are you gonna make me do it? I I talk all the time on this show, man. You go first. Okay, fine. Well, we'll start with mine. Now, there were a couple on your list that uh, I liked, that I like a lot, that would probably be in my top five, too. But uh, I went with some slightly different ones just so we could have different lists, you know? Just sure, make things sure, a little sure. More, there's a, lo- a little more variety. There's a lot of good ones, because I'm looking at your list going, oh, yeah, mm, that's a good one, too. <laughs> I mean, yours are all cartoon themes, which is cool, which is fine. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, honestly, my top five list could change just depending on the hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I have so many, there's so many great TV themes and cartoon themes that I love that I could just keep on rotating in and out for the rest of my life like airwolf is not even on mine but it's amazing um and things like that so but mine i gotta i gotta go with uh quantum leap i know is one of my favorites there's just something about it it's that that hook that yeah that that i don't know there's something about that with quantum leap was like yes um, the A team is a yes. true classic <laughs> of television. Yeah. Like if manliness had to have a theme song, that's it. <laughs> it's one of the best ever, yes. And it's a great show too. <laughs> uh DuckTales is I mean, legendary, yeah. obviously, super classic. Uh, the, the NBA on NBC theme, maybe not a traditional TV theme song, but man, is it so good. Round Ball Rock by John freaking Tesh. It's like (laughs) the anthem to end all anthems. It's not, it's it's like, this is, this is just basketball, man. Calm down. (laughs) It's almost like (laughs) it's. It's not quite, it's more jazzy, <laughs> like jazz fusion-y than the, uh, what did, the NFL on NBC theme, which is just like a freaking march of, uh, the army march, like a big clash coming together. That's a good one too, but, um, and that's another, like, a. I give that one like a, a one of my, uh, runner-up positions, but, um. I think my favorite TV theme, and it's just a show I have a 
like a, a connection to and a lot of love for in general is a uh, mash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, uh, I, I, I loved mash. I still love mash, but, uh, and that theme is just kind of hauntingly somber. And mm-hmm. yet, if you know what it's about, it's also pretty funny because I mean, that's kind of how the show is. Mm-hmm. The show is this is a very comedic take on a very dark subject. So it's a great show, but and with an amazing theme song, man, it's a it it hits different, especially when you know what it's about. So yeah, it's uh it's great. Um, I also forgot the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme song. Oh, maybe one of the best TV themes of all time. So of course. I feel like How an, did I, forget? I feel like an idiot. I don't know what I would swap out with it right now, but uh, it's yeah, amazing. Top five is kind of painful at this point. I know. <laughs> Give us your list, Ian. Well, I'm revising it on the fly because as you're going through yours, I'm thinking of sh- other shows. I'm like, oh yeah, we're, like. We're- <laughs> like i don't remember ever really watching it but the opening thing to dallas oh yeah 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 yep oh it's just good just a good it's song good yeah i mean here's the thing i never have i haven't seen a whole heck of a lot of quantum leap either but that theme is just stuck with me <laughs> well the funny thing is i remember watching that show religiously but i don't remember it having a theme oh it's a theme song is amazing <laughs> so pff, what do i know uh also cheers yes I, I, I just like you're gonna just I just like listening on a road. To, I just liked watching Cheers because of the opening. There's just something on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Golden Girls also has a great theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, as the cartoonist mentioned, Run with Us, classic, excellent. Yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, Silverhawks, that is an '80s ballad. Yeah, yep. it tells you everything you need to know about the show. It's great. Uh, the original Ninja Turtles theme song from the '80s. 90s. See, that would be Whatever on my list. Absolutely. And I I think that one carries extra weight because all the themes that came after it pay some homage to it in some fashion. Yes. Whether overt or minor. It it set the tone for Turtles going forward. Mm-hmm. And that original opening is just, even the animation is sick. I know that's not part of the theme song, but God, that's a pretty opening. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pretty much all the Disney afternoon yes. could qualify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but kind of creme de la creme. You already said DuckTales. Yeah. Darkwing Duck mm-hmm. is... Mm, that is a good one. And uh, Gummy Bears. Genius, yeah. Both of those. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Rescue Rangers is good. Tailspin is good. Mm-hmm. Arguably, it's the best part of Tailspin. But <laughs> those two kind of... I don't know. They edge out for me. Ah, oh, man. There are so many good ones from the Disney afternoon. They were just like firing on all cylinders at that point for TV themes. Um, one being brought up here in the chat that I got to give a special mention to, Frasier. You got to have them toss uh-huh. salads and scrambled eggs. It's just something, <laughs> something about that one. Uh, another one I'm thinking of, Married with Children. Amazing. <laughs> Goof Troop. <laughs> <laughs> Goof Troop yeah. for some reason sticks with me. And Gar- I feel ashamed I didn't think of this until just now. Batman the Animated Series. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just lifted directly from the movie, to be fair, <laughs> almost. To a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they yeah, rearranged yeah. it for the show. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's a little different, but it's pretty much just the 89 Batman theme, which, I mean, they. why wouldn't you go with that theme if you... Mm-hmm. 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 The X Men cartoon theme, which is way better ah, than the actual show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Sad AM's theme song. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. That's still, a good one. still a great cartoon theme song. Oh man, the the friends we've, theme is. We're starting to fall into the top twenty five <sighs> between the two. We're we're going mad, man. Who? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. And then, uh, I mean, we could go forever. We could literally could just go for... <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, bad TV theme songs, and I don't know how many there are that anybody actually remembers. So, like, uh, I don't know. 
Yeah, like Mask had an amazing theme song. There's so many. Firefly, there's multiple Star Trek shows that have amazing theme songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was going to name up DS9 primarily, but DS9 yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, but I, I'm going to go with TNG if we're going to go with any of them. And there's just so many oh, yeah, good yeah. ones. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, I mean, Dragon Ball Z, of course, if we want to get into rock that dragon. Anime and. <sighs> well, all right, all right. I think that's enough. We've had enough. Those are great. Those are all amazing. <laughs> if there were any others we didn't mention, drop them down in the comments below and uh, we can gush about how amazing they are. <laughs> all right. Here's a question from Windstar Osprey. You mentioned that one of Sega's mandates is that you're only allowed to create characters based on small to medium animals, but are there limits on how big you're allowed to make the characters? While most are around Sonic's height, we also got big boys like Tumble, Smithy, and, well, big. And back in the rebooted Archie era, you had characters like Ocklet, uh, Tundra, and Nephthys, who were on par with Eggman. P.S. When you start making new characters again, you should totally submit a tall female character for approval. I know Japanese media tends to avoid that sort of thing, but if Sailor Jupiter and Noi from Doro Hedro be beloved, you can do it too. Dora Hedora. Oh, Did I say that right? I don't know if I said I that. I don't know. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not either. <laughs> um, a lot to unpack there. Uh, number one, we haven't really tested the waters with those guidelines. It's just kind of what I've run into thus far. And if we went with other characters, that would be something to keep in mind. Um, I am all for different body types across all genders and representation so yeah no problem there tall gals buff gals round gals whatever you know try to represent what you can as long as it makes sense for the character um but again i don't foresee us adding too many new characters going forward at least in the immediate future i think we're focusing on what we have on hand as for the archie crew the comic exclusive characters were uh all approved internally they didn't go by sega Whereas with IDW, everything goes through Sega. So those are completely different scenarios. Well, maybe someday we will have the tall, evil, step on me queen character <laughs> in IDW. Maybe. Maybe. Someday. Here's a question from Wheelie Doe. There's been a lot of discussion surrounding Sonic as a series that uses chronological development for characters to grow and a static series that adheres to a status quo while also preserving character dynamics and roles for legacy's sake. Regarding this, how do you feel about where Tails has ended up as simultaneously a side character to quote-unquote move on from and left static slash independent once his arc is finished, a la plays, Shadow, Silver, Knuckles, etc., while also still remaining Sonic's proverbial best friend without the built-in tag-along younger brother appeal that children could identify with. It's possibly the longest arc of any Sonic character throughout the games, so it's interesting to think about how he grew and what that means in the process. The relationship is one of the most iconic in gaming at the same time, so the idea of moving past that is also interesting to see. It is a terrifying balancing act, um, and there was no universal game plan that I am aware of going from adventure onwards. It was kind of a game per game thing. And some of them acknowledge what came before and others did not. So frontiers dancing on the spoilery line here kind of tried to tie a bow on all of it. So that tales was in a place that could be considered the new ground floor, I guess, to better understand where are we going from here? Because up to this point, it was he'd been, you know, very independent. He had been very reliant. He had been uh, very go get him. He had been very cowardly. What what are we doing with him? And now he's in a certain place where I feel like he's he he's where we can more easily plot the course going forward. He's always going to have that younger brother dynamic with Sonic. I don't think that's ever going away. It's just the way that they interact won't necessarily be the same old bright eyed, always at his heels and more of a 
comparable partnership, but there is still the brotherly bond there. That's not going away. That doesn't have to change. That's saying that here and now I am not, you know, captain of the ship. I'm just a voice at the table. So we'll see how things play out as things go forward. I mean, Frontiers just came out in November, man. It's hard to say what's coming next when the game just came out. You say that like there isn't DLC coming here very soon for the game that is supposed to expand on the story. Mm. 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 Funny that. Here's a question from The Unmiddle Road. Might be kicking a hornet's nest with this one. No, I think you're okay, Unmiddle Road. You're not me. If Sally did come back, which design would she have? I admit to being far more nostalgic for the old boots and jacket design, and I think they'd want to call back to Saturday more directly, but design guidelines are different today. They are, and I honestly don't know how it would go. Uh, it depends on if she's brought back as a classic era character, if she's brought back as a modern era character, if they want to do both. That'd be wild. <laughs> I can't imagine that, but, you know... Maybe, in which case you'd have to set the standard in classic and figure out where it grows into modern from there. Huh. Make it happen. You um, <laughs> um, you know, would they go with the standard kind of brown tones? Would they go back to the pink, the pink and black? Uh, would they even use the blue, the boots and vest look, or would they go for something wholly different? Would they make her a squirrel, you know, and add a tail on the back? I don't know. It, the the first hurdle is just getting the idea past certain thresholds, and then we'll figure that part out. <laughs> uh, I, I still like the reboot design. I'm good with that one. If that if we had to go with something that followed the design guidelines of the series, I mean, that's yeah, I do too. Well, I, closer. Yeah, I do too. I was you know involved in that, but uh they may not be available to us for well, reasons right so, right there's a lot I, I of know. there's a lot of uh weirdness going on there i know so eh, well, who knows who knows we'll see if hopefully we get to that point here's one from the id card in issue number 32 the ensemble sonic cast attending the victory party were saved by sonic's abrupt return from eggman's attack did you ever think it was a missed opportunity to have Sonic's friends tackle on a challenge without Sonic assist Sonic's assistance? Or, in a more convenient scenario, have Shadow be the one to take down Eggman in Sonic's absence, considering he was trying to pursue Dr. Eggman two issues previously and felt indebted to Sonic an issue before? No, because that's not what we were going for in terms of themes and feelings. It was the characters were holding their own and then Sonic comes back and has his big hero moment because that's what he is to them. That's what he is to the series. So they put on a fine performance holding off Eggman as best they could. And then Sonic returns to establish the status quo and does his hero thing. And everyone is happy to see him. And there you go. Yeah. All right. Here's one from Tempo. What is Sleeping Egg Zone? It appears to be under construction in some way, yet there's a lot of grass slash moss growing everywhere, indicating a naturalistic environment. What does sleeping mean anyway? Yeah, I have no idea. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't help that it's like a Game Gear title, so it's very interpretive here and there. <laughs> it it kind of looks like Eggman might be terraforming the area into a base. I mean, you've got a bunch of his reliefs carved into the stone, or at least that's what it looks like to me. So like, maybe it's a mountainous region that he's kind of retrofitting into a base. Maybe it's sleeping egg because it's in the process of being built. So it's not a fully operational battle station. I don't know. Maybe it's just where Eggman sleeps. Maybe it's just his sleeping egg. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so just busted down his, you know, Sensory deprivation base. It says it's called a dream world, apparently. Huh. But it's like an industrial sky theme? That's odd. A dream world created by Dr. Eggman on a, taking place on a mysterious floating island in the sky. This is according to the Japanese instruction manual. Ah. Huh. Fascinating. So that might be what it is. I don't know, man. That is a weird thing that's a weird weird thing if it's in that case maybe the sleeping is alluding to it being a dreamlike zone yeah 
That's what I'm thinking. I don't There's know. Something lost in translation, you know? <laughs> I guess. Maybe. I think it's just... I think it's where Eggman sleeps. I think it's his sleeping egg zone. <laughs> it's where he goes to bed. <laughs> Here's a question from Supernova. Would you be willing to talk about your plans for Archie Mega Man 5 arc? I'm curious to how you handle Proto Man slash Dark Man mix up and how potentially Tempo would react. Uh, I'd want to go back and re research Mega Man 5 again before really answering that with confidence. Did you say Mega Man 5? <laughs> no, of course not. I wouldn't slur my words. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, that just reminds me of the typo where they actually did call it Megan Man. <laughs> on the, I think it was on the spine of the Switch Zero collection, Mega Man Zero oh, collection. Wow. I think something like that, Megan Man. Yeah, that was very <laughs> funny. <laughs> so, anyway, sorry. Uh, like four is still fairly fresh in my mind because that was what we were gearing up for. Like I had already kind of plotted that out. I knew where it was and that, that remains kind of imprinted five. We hadn't fully explored yet because it was, it was a bit down the road. You know, we, we had the general roadmap, but we hadn't put a ton of thought into it just yet. So I'd want to look again at how dark man one through four are implemented, how the game presents stuff and see if there's a degree of, reasonable confusion over Proto Man. Like the base plot is would still be the same. It's Wiley mad that Blues screwed things up for him in four sets out to tarnish his name. Like does a whole campaign just to spite Proto Man. <laughs> and Proto Man doesn't care about his public image, so he's not going to immediately rush to defend himself. He's like, all right, whatever. And he, Again, I'd want to look at how the game treats it and where we were in the narrative up to that point to see just how far we could push the confusion on the characters' parts because we don't want... I wouldn't want it to be an extended idiot plot just for the drama. So, hmm. I don't know. I, I don't have a solid answer for you because I honestly don't remember exactly how we were going to approach it, but I do remember at least some of the thinking behind it in that you know, some of the confusion comes from Proto Man not caring that he's being impersonated because he just lives on his own. Yeah. Who cares what the world thinks of him? And, you know, not wanting to dwell too much on the, oh, no, is it really evil Proto Man? No, nobody thinks it is. Don't talk down to the audience. Come on now. <laughs> oh, no. Who is who is this mysterious Mr. X? Oh, it, oh <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> all right here's a question from sonic paj is gun supposed to be the military of the united federation the usa analog or is it more of an international peacekeeping force like nato gun does seem to have quite a few naval ports including on the island area in sonic rush is gun an army for everyone or does the uf use them as a sort of world police to compete with eggman I wish I had better wording. I've just been watching too much mecha anime. <laughs> well, I mean, that'll, that, that, that's okay. <laughs> this is my understanding. Take it with a grain of salt. But I, I'm under the impression that the United Federation encapsulates all the human territories. And yeah, it's got a clear U.S. analog to it. It's got a lot of U.S. themes to it. And in, you know, other media, there were other nations. but that was also during the two worlds thing. So ha, 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 ha. for now, I, I, I think the United Federation covers the human territories and gun would have been the protectorate of those territories. They are the guardian units of the nation and the nation is the United Federation of planets. Mm. No, wait, no. Now what state gun is in? After the Eggman War, we don't know. We know Eggman kind of put a stomping on him, thanks to the Tales Tube, but we don't know to what degree yet. And I don't know when that's going to be explored. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to be somewhat something USA related, probably, because, I mean, 
what other nation in the world would call literally call their uh protecting force gun mm. i mean <laughs> i mean anyway here's a question from snowflame if Surgeon Kit got turned into roboticized masters, what would their powers be? Oh, let's see. I mean, obviously el- electricity and water, but you know we gotta have. Surge would get cool. the circuit face breaker. <laughs> Launch out a series of nodes that act as a conduit, so that she zips around. And hits you from just about any angle, but you can't cross the beam because that zaps you too. And throws out all sorts of horrible patterns that are like impossible to dodge. And why do I think this game is fun? <laughs> it's almost, it's a little bit like a Lech Man's thing, but a, a little know, bit. A, a, little, a, a, little, a little more uh, wild. We're over 10 fits. games in. There's going to be some. I know, I know, I know. Out. It's It's impossible to make it completely unique, obviously, but still. And. <laughs> Kit would be tidal surge, just a ludicrous wave of water, just a big old push objects out of the way, hit everything from floor to ceiling. You just launch this puppy and everything is going to get smushed by water. Tidal surge, uh, like how it's got the word surge in the name of it, literally, mm-hmm. because of his fixation on surge, maybe. We'll go with that. <laughs> wow. That sounds awesome. What about, uh, you know what? Why not throw Starline in here? Go for the trio. What the heck? What what would Starline's roboticized hmm. master power be? It'd probably hmm. be ch- like Tricor related, right? Maybe. Maybe. If you want to make it like a, some kind of special roboticized master type thing. Or, you know, go with the warp topaz. Yeah. You know, warp gate. He can create warps that he can escape through or throw you into hazards. Mm-hmm. Maybe go something with the hypnosis glove, go with the uh, spurs, sp- the spurs, either poison or electric. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's his thing. He's got his full kit and he's just a like mini boss. He's not even a roboticized master anymore. He's just a hazard. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like the yellow devil sort of like he's like the he's just a freaking amazing, just absolutely curb stompy type of boss that you have to just try and get past he's out he's equipped with the constellation drive oh boy (laughs) each time he switches a weapon you get like a motif of a constellation over him and a new star lights up and you gotta learn which star denotes which weapon he's equipping oh no that sounds badass (laughs) wow oh boy i need i need this in my life um (laughs) <laughs> can can we get this we get some fan art of these three? Like, <laughs> like these sound freaking awesome. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, and our last question before we take a break is from Smiley21. Surge versus Cream. Who would win and why would it be Cream? Cream, if Surge is like, eh, this kid isn't worth my time, drops her guard, and Cream just kind of whispers, Jeez, get her. And <laughs> You know, sniped from behind. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I could also see, like, cream as a distraction, and or not cream as a distraction, cheese as a distraction, and then cream comes up and just wallops her on the back of the head. <laughs> just bam, just smacks her, and she just falls over. Sounds, sounds great. Sounds about right to me. All right. Well, let's take a quick break, and when we'll be back with more Bumblecast. We have returned with a question from Sir Needlemouse. Hey, Ian and Kyle. In SA1, the original Tornado was destroyed and replaced with the Tornado 2. Then in SA2, it was replaced by the Tornado 3, a.k.a. the Cyclone. Then we see the Tornado 2 again in Heroes, and a different Tornado 3 in Unleashed. Since Sonic 4, the Tornado seems to have reverted to the design of the original in every game. What's the deal with the tornado, and is the current plane a repaired version of the original or a, or a tornado four? Thanks and keep up the good work. I don't know if it's the tornado has just become this, you know, 
pet project of his that gets updated with every single game. It's like, oh, I want to change it to be a two seater. Oh, I'm going to change it to this. I'm going to change it to do that. Or if he just has a fleet of tornadoes and you just kind of assume that they're all the tornado. Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> Why not both? Yeah, it's like Iron Man suits. He just keeps on coming up with a bunch of them. That that's the only way that really makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that he has a whole fleet of tornadoes. He's like, yeah, I got the original here. This baby, this baby's a classic. But I've also got my variants on it, so <laughs> that would be that would be cool. He's got a whole garage of planes. I want to see that. Make it happen, Ian. Here's a question from Scurvy Pirate Hog. Ian, I think it's time for something heartwarming, something comfy. Something that can give us all a feel-good feeling. So, if a person is sad, bummed, depressed, or just feels very down, how would the different Sonic characters try to cheer up this person? Feel free to include the IDW cast like Tingle and Whisper. Uh, Sonic would let the person kind of decide. Like, he might initiate, and if he knows exactly what's got him down, he'll try to intervene directly. But otherwise... He'll kind of let them take it at their own pace and facilitate them. You know, just hang out and be chill and quiet if that's what they need. Go out and do an adventure if they need a distraction, whatever. You know, he'll be the the facilitating force behind it, but he won't necessarily intrude. Tails might try to fix the problem, which may not be the right way to go about it. But he's also going to be aware of the other person's feelings so that when he realizes he's starting to go a little too far, he can back it up and maybe rein it in a little bit. But he would still be more directly engaging. He would want to help straight up. Amy would be a little more delicate about the whole thing. I think she would be more intuitive to what is bothering the person and directly help out, whether it's comforting words or just um, comfort food uh, the distraction they need right then and there. Tangle, I think, would be uh, kind of along somewhere in between Sonic and Tails, where she really wants to help, and she's going to be very active about it, but maybe not quite know when to back off and you know cause a little bit of a fracas. She means well, and you know that she means well, and that kind of makes it all right in the end. Whisper wouldn't know what to do. She barely knows how to handle her own emotions. She's not getting into that mix. She'll let you figure it out on your own. Not because she doesn't care, but because she doesn't know how to help, and she's not going to make it worse. Big would suggest you go fishing. <laughs> well, I mean, why wouldn't he? What would Omega suggest? <laughs> well, first he would ask if their problems are incendiary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Could be. Can you light it on fire? No. I am out of ideas. Good luck. <laughs> I suggest blowing something up. Uh, I would go fishing with Big. That seems like a nice time. My solution is use gun. If that does not work, use more gun. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 He's right. Here's a question from Sam Cybercat. We've seen that the theme for this year's calendar on Sonic Channel is unusual alternate universes, with January having Shadow and Infinite being singers. But what are some unusual AUs and character combinations that you'd both like to see crop up for this, if nothing was off limits? I don't know, man. The Shadow <laughs> and Infinite being pop idol singers that hate each other backstage is already the bar has been set so high I didn't even how know... can one ever <laughs> i didn't even know this was a thing <laughs> oh my god like there's a whole story about them getting into a fight backstage in the dressing room and stuff it's it's exquisite oh I beautiful amazing okay i've been shown the art here and wow okay that is mm -hmm. freaking outstanding mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh man. In, 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 oh, incredible. <laughs> like with that as the standard, I'm spoiled for choice. Anything goes at that point, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like do a whole uh monster verse starring Werehog and kaiju esque interpretations of the other characters. Why not? Oh man, that would be cool. 
<laughs> that still seems too tame. That still I know. seems too I generic. Wow, I have like no, I I can I don't even know what to, where to go with this. Like, wow, I'm, like maybe a Deus Ex take on the Chaotix. I never asked for this, says Vector, and you know his new cybernetic parts and the bill that goes with them. <laughs> oh man, it's like it's just cyberpunk Chaotix. It sounds great. Uh, Afro Samurai starring Big. <laughs> Sure, why not? I'm going to get that number one headband. This is fishing pole styled katana. I, I don't know, man. Anything's possible. Yeah, it's... Mmm, man. There's too many possibilities with this. I'm just... I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm, I'd li- I, I'm actually kind of amazed that they're doing something like this on the official side because they don't usually do that sort of thing mm-hmm. so it's exciting to just see that it's even like happening <laughs> so i'm looking forward to whatever they come up with i mean i i, I, am I have like, nothing i am exciting. i don't have anything to add or anything it's just like okay what 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 are they what are they doing here like what what could this what could be what could they have on deck like hmm <laughs> it's just weird to think about because this isn't normal this is weird, Ian. I'm very, I'm very confused by this alternate universe thing they're pulling off. You know. Pull full Sailor Moon roster with the cast, <laughs> maybe. Uh, it's a magical girl team led by Blaze. Yeah, like <laughs> the heck, why not? Let's let's do it. Sure, man, that would be wild. <laughs> Power Ranger versions of the characters. I don't see. I still feel like all of this is too tropey. It's too simple. The it's too obvious. Yeah, the pop idol Shadow and Infinite is just genius. <laughs> it's like it started off immediately with the one. Uh, the suggestion one here is, is Shoujo High School Romance with Metal Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's, 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 the, that's the good stuff. That's the old pepper. I got to give credit to Pedanticat in our uh, Discord chat for that one. That one is uh, fantastic. <laughs> Can you romance Omega before he blows you up? Find out in the third chapter. <laughs> good stuff. Good, good stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Motobugs all flustered. Can they get Buzz Bomber to go with them to prom? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's get into this next question here from Razor. What would Sally and Nicole do if they were transported to the Boom universe and they see Boom Eggman sneaking up on the on a Sonic Scarecrow from that one episode? <laughs> I think they would recognize it was a Scarecrow. And wonder why he's trying to ambush an inanimate object. <laughs> and wondering why he's dressed like that. And where <laughs> they are. I mean, not to make them the wet blankets in the comedy show, but you're talking about two of the most observant and rational characters in a show that's full of irrationality. Yeah, I know. They would be they like... It would be the straight foil to the whole thing. Yeah, they would be like... They would be completely out of their element. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, even Amy isn't that, <laughs> isn't quite on that level in that show. And she's arguably the most rational character out of all of them. I mean, Sally's looking at Mad Burger and Hedgehog Town and all this and all the antics. And she's just like, I can fix them. No, Sally, we need to go home. Quiet, Nicole. <laughs> I'm plotting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now it then. I need infrastructure. And now. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, there's a prime directive with alternate realities, Nicole. We can make this better for them. Sally, no. <laughs> oh no. Sally, yes. <laughs> oh well, this is these are the prime versions of Sally and Nicole now. <laughs> <laughs> or not prime, boom versions of Sally and Nicole. <laughs> Sally's just trying to fix everything <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Oh, Everybody's boy. weirded out because Mad Burger actually tastes like food now. It's odd. I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> oh wow! 
That would be that would be something. <laughs> Here's a question from Perry. Are alternate evil Sonics no longer allowed in modern Sonic stories? It's not hard to notice Sonic Prime, for all its alternates, has no alternate Sonics at all. Yeah, and there's a reason for that, and I don't know if I can talk about it, but it's... I think it's silly. Um, and beyond that, I mean, we don't really have, like, straight-up parallel universes in the comic, so there's not really an opportunity there to do that, so... I mean, if you want your thematic evil Sonics, you've got Metal Sonic, you've got Surge to a lesser extent in Shadow. We're not hurting for doppelgangers or hmm. dark reflections. That's an interesting thing. Is it in any way related to, is the reasoning any in any way related to previous instances of evil not Sonics? In this, it, or? Not in this instance, no. Oh, okay. You would think that would be the most obvious, but no. No? <laughs> it's no. not related to that. Oh. Hence why I say silly. Yeah, I, I was wondering. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a silly reason. to. That would be a silly reason to begin with, but yeah. And, and it, uh, it, that That's more frustrating, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Here's one from Bedantacat. In the post-reboot universe, were the Witch Carters actual villainous characters, or were they innocent Mobians that were forced to be evil due to Wendy? I imagine that they were not great people to begin with, but she made them worse. Like, left to their own devices, you wouldn't necessarily want to hang out with them, but they were worse and made to do worse by Wendy. So there would have been a degree of sympathy for them, but only so much. You can only go so far. Here's a question from Nondal. Rough and Dumble seem to be Clutch's goons now. Was this really the best deal help he could find? That poor old man. Does this make them something of a group, or is it an on-call basis? <laughs> I kind of imagine that, like, he gets tired of them and fires them, and then realizes that he needs expendable goons so he hires them back and promises double the pay but he never really paid them to begin with but they fall for it every time because they're stupid or they'll quit in a huff and then well they need something to do they need someone to fence the goods they need you know support much higher than what they can contemplate oh well, there's that guy named clutch you worked with him before well maybe we can ask him again yeah maybe it'll be different this time but you know Clutch is a businessman, and they're about as cheap as labor gets. <laughs> uh, you know, you get what you pay for, though. So, to be fair. <laughs> the, oh. the broken clock is right twice a day, so he's not going to set his schedule by that clock. But, you know, sometimes you can use it for parts, bludgeon someone with said clock. Blunt tools have their uses. <laughs> Uh, but if the hands fall off, then what? <laughs> well, then you just throw it in the trash and nobody really asks about it anymore, do they? Ooh, ominous. Here's one from Noni. What does Mimic do when he isn't on a job or plotting revenge? <laughs> Jalen just keeps to himself. You know, he I imagine he's good at living off the land and staying off the grid. Maybe he's got a stash of books somewhere just reads <laughs> he's just like yeah i'm i'm not needed or i i have nothing just here you know picks up a the big book of historic tragedies and kind of chuckles to himself going through it <laughs> uh his favorites <laughs> all right well we're gonna hop into the frontier spoiler zone i think you're just gonna keep this going through january and then after that we will yeah we'll cut it off once we hit february i think we've been generous enough with the feature yes 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 so uh, thank you everybody we, we, we appreciate your uh thank you for marking your questions as spoilers too and anything like that so much appreciated uh here's this one from superior pizza by the way, Sonic Frontier spoilers, if you have not played Sonic Frontiers and don't want to be spoiled, well, cut it off here. We'll see you next time. But uh, if you don't, if you do want to be spoiled, hey, stay or stick around. In the past, the Super Sonic time limit being ring-based has never been officially established. With that in mind, is Super Sonic truly invulnerable, or at least his game incarnation? 
During the Titan fights, he was shown being visibly hurt via conventional means or outright game overed. Is he invulnerable in the sense that he is just super durable and can be harmed if you hit him hard enough? It's it varies from game to game. Most games he is invulnerable. That doesn't mean he doesn't feel what he's getting hit by. It <laughs> just means it it isn't damaging him. You know, you get hit by Giganto, you're going to feel that. <laughs> it's just you don't turn into a smear. That's the difference. Uh, there's been the occasional boss that can harm or rob rings from supersonic, but those are few and far between. So generally speaking, yeah, he should be considered invulnerable. All right. Here's one from Sonic, Sonic, Sonic. Since Sonic Frontiers references super knuckles, does that mean that the only male hedgehogs can go super rule is gone and the non hedgehog super forms are officially canon? This is me dancing on a fine line. <laughs> I was going to say, this seems like you trying to stuff something under the rug or under the door, desperate, trying to stick it in. Come on, go! Because <laughs> if we get a Super Knuckles in the future, then that line means Knuckles was referencing the classic era. Yeah. And he does have a Super Transformation. If that never materializes and we're stuck with the hedgehogs from now till the end of the universe, then that's just him making a joke. Mm. You know, if he, if he could turn into super knuckles, it'd be fine, but that's not possible. Hence it's a joke. Har, har, har. <laughs> so I, I am walking that fine line. I, I want there to be a super knuckles by dinghy, but <laughs> I, I can't make that decision myself. So make the super knuckles happen. Ian. I'm hedgehogging my bets, if you will. <laughs> but Knuckles is an echidna, so what the heck? What the heck? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, and our last question is from none other than good old Scruffy Matt. I've been wondering about something from Sonic Frontiers. What did Eggman do to keep himself entertained the entire time he was trapped in cyberspace? I feel like there's only so many times... You can send people emails claiming to be a Masary prince before you start to get bored. <laughs> ah, I imagine he did do that now. Canon. Um, <laughs> going by the egg memos, he spent most of his time researching. I mean, he's in a, a almost infinite database, pulling data points from all over the galaxy it seems mm -hmm. I mean, he, he is a scientist he is a man of uh in intellect he wants data and here is all the data so you know if he's not trying to figure out how to get out or being destroyed by the anti-malware systems he he's reading <laughs> what a nerd yeah <laughs> uh well you know eh, he built a death egg to look like his he built a death star that looks like his face he is the epitome of nerd <laughs> I, I was figuring maybe he was just playing games on his uh, eggmobile screen you know it's got that built-in control panel with the screen on it maybe it's got some games in there <laughs> yeah, you can only play so many rounds of Flappy Flicky before it gets tedious. <laughs> Flappy Flicky. <laughs> Is this a thing? I hope it's a thing. Somebody make it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. All right. I think we've had enough. Yep. Yeah, but before we go, we need, we need to give a big thank you to all the shows. To all the shows. <laughs> thank you, shows. <laughs> To all the folks that make this show possible. Uh, to, read, to say that again. <laughs> Unless you want to just leave. I'm not having the, a stroke. What are you talking just about? Just leaving the, leaving the flubs. Why not? I guess we'll leave them in. Uh, read the names, no, no. Ian. <laughs> put it at the end. Of the, put it at the end. Okay. Big thank you to Daniel H., Jennifer R., John B., Robotnik Holmes, Sam Cybercat, Samuel P., Torchbound, Mike B., Andrew D., Dave M., Salute Your Cat, Coupling Crew 128, J. Frost, Do As Diz, Dan, the Hero of Light 13, Noni, Professor Scruffy Matt, Chris A., Sony, Triforce Riku, Sonic, 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 John M., Jib, Yummy M., Vionan M., Lee H., K., Lisa M., Ben Wolf, Spain, Scurvy Pirate Hog, Cheval, 
Arc Fighter, Keeper of Monsters, Axis Xanary, The Painter, Tick Tick, Jonathan D, Starlight Sec, The Name is X, Twilord, Solaris Stain, Nemer, Godzilla, Nondal, Cameron H, The Disgaean, Ava Arctic, Justin S, Dove, Justin Mountain Soul, Alex GS, Chaos Sonic One, Dabbler, The Dalek Sonic Can sonic legacy ink thinks pedanti can't les jennifer h jolene b read the supernamic alpha mono you can joshua s omega watt uni 221 of the stars nova poly duo and tails preston m noah m derusival kojiro highwind sonic 84 awesome cakesters supersonic fan kjb red Chase l wild card 717 z broadcast callum q jack c j the redneck miles the prower navare exodel agent kaz four sonic fan puppy the scholar rhythm raccoon and ben bank Pig Dan 20, In Zephyr, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Curly Quills, Angela V, Aiden S, The Marble Gardener, Mox, Biggie Sawdust, Owen B, D, Wheelie Doe, Sandra B, H, Smiley 21, Sammy S, Bushman, Crooker, Vlad, IPC, Sterling, Sonic, Mancher, Congo, Winskull, Supernova, Superior Pizza, Sonic, Padge, Philip is Cold, Michael P, Thick Off, The Crucified, Devil, Loop, De Loop, Omega Man 21, Thievius, Delta God 77, Dominic the Raccoon, Planet Breezy, Unity, Kedrian, Lori L, Native Nerd 27, Jason G, Cody G, Lacey M, Mar Marcy H, Caswell, Mr. Murderbird, The Giant Murdering Bird, Lucky Lychee, Razor, Sir Me Sir Needle Mouse, SB, My Fish Eats Rocks, The ID Card, Phil C, Jonathan F, Hip Kid Brick, Le Levi C, Sonic Underground, Sonic Underground, Tetsu Knife, Ultra Guy, Krabo, Nils, Sonic Mania 2099, Hadronis, Salato 02, Noob 600, Pele, Hey Boys, True Sonic, DG Lab 79, Zapon Syrian, Te L Technopata, Buttered Noodles, Miles Power D, Frost Hobbiton, Wheels 282, Hedgehog, Jamal S, Luminous Strangers, Zay Cartoons, The Unmiddle Road, and Snowflame. Are we almost at the end of Sonic Underground? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Incredible. And I hope to God you actually recorded that, because I'm a little dizzy afterwards. Uh, yeah, it's recorded. <laughs> That's going to wrap us up for this episode of the Bumblecast. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. See ya. You know, we need one more person to round it out. But right now we got 169 names. Nice. Why do we need one more person to round it out? 169 seems perfectly nice to me. I like the round numbers. Uh, well, I mean, come on. There's nothing more round than a 169. I really can't argue with that. Mm, I know. <laughs> okay. You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T. Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Thank you for all your shows. <laughs> like Fraser, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, <laughs> Quantum Leap. Thank you, Quantum Leap. <laughs> Thank you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You want to stay till I have read all of the names. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. And the list is largely the same. Ba, ba, ba. You want to go where the questions are. Answers are often inane. You want to stay till I read all of the names. Do, 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 do. Boom, bring. I love that theme song. <laughs>